Hey folks, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime. We do have a giveaway going on for this thing. Down pin comment and in the description. Also, we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. I would appreciate if you guys would go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Because if you do, maybe we get there. I don't know. I'm chasing a dream here on YouTube. And I appreciate you guys helping me chase my dreams. That being said, we need to talk about something that's really amazing in regards to Nintendo. Something that I certainly didn't expect. Maybe I was just... I don't know. I, I, I guess... I don't think I should have expected this. And it's it's especially weird coming off of comments from Shantura Furukawa about the declining sales of Nintendo Switch. And that is because articles like this are popping up all over the internet. And this is in regards to their June sales in Japan, where Nintendo Switch has reportedly earned the best ever June sales in Japan. So this, this is literally 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2023. 3. Like, this is the best. There isn't any other year that had better June sales. So those sales hit around 380,000 units, as it says here in the article. Uh, it's going to be probably passing 30 million later this year. And you know what? If it sells an additional 30 million worldwide between this year and next year, it would be the best selling system of all time. It's entirely possible, maybe not likely. After all, Shintura Furukawa did warn us that not only are they projecting sales to decline to 15 million this current fiscal year, they're not even sure they're going to maintain the sales to hit 15 million, uh, and he's well aware of this. And this is actually going to come into play in a video we're going to be releasing a bit later. Uh, we have a kind of three videos in the works all at once because uh, we just have some really interesting news topics here to talk about. But I, I find this interesting because obviously these sales were boosted because of the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. We knew the May sales were going to be up. We didn't know it would still be really popping off in June. And honestly, Switch hasn't really looked back since about three weeks before Tears of the Kingdom came out. From that period on forward, it's been dominating in Japan all over again. And it's interesting to see those sales continue to surge forward. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can dig into here, like our good friend Stealth. Uh, came on here and said that Nick A was reporting uh, that it's 68% higher than last year, which is just incredible. Uh, and, you know, th th there's a lot of other stuff here. But the point I wanted to really talk about here is how incredible this run has been for Nintendo Switch. Look, we all know that we've talked a ton about Nintendo Switch 2. And in fact, I'm just to give you a teaser. That's what our video after this one's actually about because of something else that's happening, two other things that are happening, one officially from Nintendo, one from an insider. But the biggest thing that I want to focus on here is this generation of Nintendo, whenever it ends, right? This, this current Switch generation, whether it ends this year, next year, 2025, whenever they close it up and move on to the next thing, it has been an incredible journey unlike anything we've ever seen in Nintendo history. Now, I know we can point to DS and its incredible sales, but DS, despite having those incredible sales, didn't necessarily have the video game sales to back it up. You weren't seeing things like a Zelda game moving 30 million units, an Animal Crossing game, you know, moving X. Like, you just weren't really seeing this. We saw incredible sales with things like New Super Mario Bros., but we weren't seeing the same sort of success across the board with all of Nintendo's IP. Now, DS was a massively successful generation for Nintendo, and I'm not trying to knock it and knock in the variety of games and the third-party games that were a success. But if we're honest, you could just look at the overall sales numbers. Switch has sold more software while selling less units. This is a balance from Nintendo that's never been seen, as Nintendo has really never had one system that combines all their development studios together. Dating back to the Famicom, the Game Boy came out not too far after that, and Nintendo's had split development teams ever since until the Nintendo Switch. And now we're kind of seeing all of this bear fruit for them as not only is the Switch, I mean, the idea that in year seven, the Nintendo Switch, when there's a brand new Sony platform on the market, also releasing big games like Final Fantasy 16 is still at the top of the leaderboards in sales and not just at the top doing bigger numbers than they've seen ever in the history of the system. It's just the history of June, by the way. They've obviously sold bigger numbers of Switch units in other months. It, it, it just, it's nice reminder that we are in a generation unlike any other for Nintendo. And all of this happened in the midst of three leadership changes. I mean, think about how, tumult how tumultuous the top of Nintendo 
has really been from a literal standpoint, but how from, you know, an outward look, Nintendo's just doing better than ever. Let's just think about this logically, right? Like, Iwata, the late Iwata, Satoru Iwata, he's the one that was the mastermind behind the Nintendo Switch in the first place. And while he didn't get to see it launch, he was the person that was idealizing it and helping it come to fruition. And it was one of his last great ideas. Then all of a sudden we had uh, Takahashi uh, take over for a little bit there as an interim CEO, and he got the product launched. And then obviously a couple years after that, Furukawa stepped in. Oh, and that wasn't the only transition because, hey, a year after that, guess who stepped down? Reggie fils who was actually part of the board of directors at Nintendo of Japan. He stepped down, and Doug Bowser was promoted. And Doug Bowser didn't take his seat in Japan. He only took over in Nintendo of America, so that seat that Reggie vacated just went away. They didn't replace it with another representative. So Nintendo's had all of this turnover. Meanwhile, you have Miyamoto transitioning into other roles, now focusing on movies and theme parks, which, by the way, Nintendo's dominating there as well. According to the data we have from Universal, it looks like... It literally looks like the Universal theme parks for Nintendo are some of the biggest attractions they've ever launched at those theme parks. And they're just opening up more and expanding more and more. We have a Donkey Kong coming later in Japan that's going to later come, obviously, out to uh, Orlando and, and out in L.A., but Hollywood. But, hey, we're not done there either because then the Mario movie it released and is... Well, we already know. It's either number two or number three, depending on if you count Lion King's uh, remake or whatever. It's it's up there among the best, like, highest grossing animated films of all time. And now it's actually landing on Peacock next month, by the way, for those curious. Yep, that's the service it's going to go to. No surprise, that is Universal Service. So it's going to be streaming exclusively on Peacock. It's already been available to purchase through all, all the digital platforms, you know, your TV platforms, your Amazons, etc. And yes, now available to buy physically as well, 4K Blu-rays, 8K Blu-rays, I think I've even seen out there. So look, Nintendo is in a great place. And it's sort of incredible that this is happening you know, growing up, I always thought that might be the best we see Nintendo ever be, right? When when I grew up with the Nintendo Entertainment System and the Super Nintendo and the mega success of the Game Boy through the Game Boy Color, uh, and then when they had that massive resurgence with Wii and DS, you're like, okay, maybe this is the top of the mountain. And even those generations didn't always necessarily feel like they were as much for me as they may have been just to grow gaming in general. You know, this was before smartphones. You know, it kind of led into that smartphone tablet era that sort of took over a lot of the market, I think, that Wii and DS was sort of expanding into. And then they come right back with the Switch, which is a modern take on gaming. I, I it, it, it was a take on gaming at the right time, right? Like, we needed this modern portable, but also still can be used on a TV device in a world where we're always on the go and have less time to do things and every other device we touch tends to be a bit more portable unless you're rocking a desktop computer so it, it just it felt right and it feels right that hey we're not really done with that it feels like we can keep getting more of it which is why a lot of us hope their next device is another hybrid handheld home console some of you guys obviously wish for it to be something entirely different but there's a huge contingent of us that goes man switch came at the right time what it provides to our life. We wanted to keep providing that just with better hardware. So we'll see what happens with that. But you know what? We are in an incredible generation. And I think sometimes we need to look back on it and just go, damn, thanks, Nintendo. Thanks for giving me seven years of amazing gaming memories. And who knows? Maybe there's more to come. Mario Wonders on the way. Peach game. Super Mario RPG is coming back. Heck, Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon 3D. Oh, I guess HD. I don't know. It looks a little rough around the edges, but still looks better than the original. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you in that next video.